Hey everybody, my name is Tavis Forrester. I'm a research biologist with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, and I research predator-prey interactions of large animals. And I'm gonna show you how we set up cameras today that we use for our research in predator-prey interactions. Right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to find a spot. So how do we find a spot? Well, a lot of people use cameras for scouting hunting or uh, for seeing when animals live in their backyard but we need to use the camera scientifically to survey for wildlife. So we have a grid of points laid out over the landscape that are, was randomly selected, or the starting point of that grid was randomly selected. And I try and find a place as close to that grid point as possible to place my cameras that'll actually, in a place that'll actually get wildlife. So here we are, we're in the middle of this lodgepole larch forest kind of thicket and I don't know if you can see but there's a bit of an elk trail going down here we wouldn't want to put the camera in the middle of that thicket over there unless we could find a game trail because all we get are squirrels and so I'm going to attach it to this larch here we got our tools of the trade we have the camera right here uh, it's just a commercially available motion sensor camera that uses heat and motion to take pictures of animals with an infrared flash so it's invisible and doesn't um, scare the animals. We've got the strap and we've got the lock because otherwise these things can get stolen. And we have a few other tools over here, a compass, a uh, card reader for a phone, and a ruler. And most importantly, we have the GPS unit. And this is how um, I find the points and make sure we're close enough. So I'm gonna take a time-lapse video of me setting up this camera, and then I'm gonna show you how we test and um, make sure they're operational. got the camera trap set up and there's a few tips I want to give you about camera trap setup. It really depends what kind of animal you're trying to capture but we're trying to capture all ungulates like deer and elk and predators so we want to keep that camera pretty low. We keep it about the same height as my knee to make sure we're catching bobcats and coyotes and you want to get this uh, so it, it, it's catching those animals out there. And you want to get this thing nice and flat, so see how it's not leaned back too far, so that it can um, catch the animals out there on the landscape. We got it strapped on and locked, and now we're going to do what's called the walk test, where I'm going to use the walk test mode, which is different on different models of cameras, but um, there we go. Uh, is a mode that lets, see that light blinking? That light is, is a sign that the camera is detecting me and that if the, it was set up to picture mode, it would be taking pictures. Now that light does not blink if um, the camera is actually taking pictures because we want the animals not to notice it. Unfortunately, elk are really good at noticing cameras and also really good at pawing at them until they get ripped off the tree. So you can see, I use this walk test mode to see how far the camera can detect um, me. And that is part of uh, what we use when we analyze the camera data. Now what we do is we use an app. Everything is on the phone these days. And we um, record all the data, including who put the camera out the date, uh, what we're doing. And that allows us to collect information that about what kind of tree it's on. This is a pretty decent sized larch that has yet to get its needles. Um, how far it can detect animals. Can it shoot all the way out to that little pine tree? And, or is it only able to detect to that log? And uh, what, where it is, really important for getting it back. So what we, what we use this information for is this camera will catch pictures of animals as they're walking by. 
And that helps us do a couple things. One, it helps us determine what kind of habitat the animals like. So if we have lots of pictures of bobcats in these thicker forests and none in the open, we can figure out that bobcats like this thicker forest. Two, it lets us know how animals are interacting. So if a coyote only walks by this camera when there is no mountain lions for two days, and that happens across hundreds of cameras that we have spread out over the landscape, we can figure out that coyotes are avoiding mountain lions or deer are avoiding mountain lions, which would be smart for deer. Um, we can also estimate the density of animals. So that gets more complicated mathematically, but we can use the camera um, information to estimate density of animals through a couple different methods. One, if they have some marks on them, uh, two, by using movement rates and how often animals go by the camera. Right, I can show you a little bit about how these work. These have a motion sensor that also has a heat sensor in it. So when something's moving by the camera that's warmer than the background, it triggers. This is the infrared flash, so it's mostly invisible to the mammalian eye, and but will still light up in order to take nighttime pictures, which are black and white. Um, so we got the batteries in here, the programming. It takes an SD card. Uh, we have all our SD cards labeled so that we know which SD card goes to which camera. All the cameras have an ID number so that we can track which cameras are where. We have 205 cameras out on the landscape in any given season. Um, we also use this to program um, the camera to take as the pictures that we want, depending on the brand of camera, the, the programming is all different, but they, most cameras can take bursts of photos, which we have and uh, set up. And so we can get multiple pictures of the same animal. If one of our collared animals is out here, we want to be able to see that collar and it helps at nighttime to get multiple pictures so that you can see um, which species there is if some of the pictures are not great. So cameras can also help you figure out really cool questions about what's in the in your backyard or nearby wildlife or figure out areas to go hunting. And they're uh, a tool that is being used more and more in wildlife biology.